Hey everybody, uh, it's Alexis here. I'm going to be talking about rosé today. We're going to talk about everything from patio pounders to uh, serious pinks. And um, I think it's a fun fact to know that in France, rosé actually outsells white wine. But you might think that rosé is a more uh, modern product and that maybe outside of France and uh, the American market that it's not consumed, but actually it's hugely popular. Um, rosé wine is just wine on its way to being red wine. Its color is going to be determined by first of all the grape that you're starting with or grapes that you're starting with if they're thick skinned or deeply pigmented wine, uh, grapes you're going to get more color in the wine the other factor is going to be how long are the skins in contact with the juice in order to determine the intensity of the color of the finished wine um, <clears throat> so some terms i'd like you to know um, for the lightest style of rosé, we have direct press. Direct press is when you just take the grapes, you crush them, and that juice that you ferment is, um, that's it. So there's no skin contact except what happens in the tank there. So it's going to be very, very lightly colored. There's very little opportunity for the skins of the grape to color uh, the juice uh, before it ferments. Another term to know would be saigné, and the um, origin of saigné means to bleed and uh, comes from the stem of the word blood. And what's happening there is you're crushing the red grapes, you're taking that juice, and then that is what you're going to ferment. Now, interestingly, uh, that is sometimes used for champagne rosés, and it will say it on the label because it is more labor intensive, it's more expensive to make, and therefore they're more expensive to buy. Um, so saigné, to bleed. Um, and interestingly also, talking about champagne, is that champagne is the only appellation where you can blend uh, the red juice with uh, white grape juice to ferment to make a rosé champagne and use the appellation of champagne. Now, can you make a blended rosé, meaning blending um, red juice with white juice to make a rosé? You can do that wherever you want. Of course you can. However, you can't put the appellation name on it, so it'll just be like um, a vin de France. Um, basics here. Rosé is the French term. Uh, it literally means pink in French. If it's Italian, it's going to be rosato, and if it's um, Spanish, you'll see rosado. Um, those Italian and Spanish rosés tend to be darker in color. They're not going to be like our Provençal style, where they're light and uh, fresh and just lightly like salmon colored. Um, you'll see more of it because it's what's expected of the, of the wines on the modern market, but traditionally that's, that's not what we see. Um, and super cool fact. Um, the area of Provence, uh, specifically Marseille, was founded by the Greeks 2,600 years ago. Shortly after, the Romans come, they bring their grapevines, and they actually were making rosé all the way back then, 2,600 years ago. Um, it was uh, common and traditional for them to just lightly press their grapes and not do long extended macerations. And so rosé has been with us and from that region uh, for a very, very long time. And I just think that's super cool that it's not just a, like a modern fad, um, although it is wildly popular now. Um, <clears throat> it's also one of the first established wine regions of France, which is also interesting. Um, when does a rosé become a red wine? Well, really when the winemaker says it is. So the one that I'm drinking right now is from the Czech Republic, and this is called a rosé. It's called a rosé by the winemaker. It is listed on this wine menu uh, as a rosé. Could you argue that this is getting into like light chilled red territory? You absolutely could. Um, I think that uh, it really is about the beverage director, how they're listing it on the menu and what their customer's expectation is of how you want to classify it. You could easily put this in a chilled red category, but if you were to look at what the winemaker is saying, they are calling this their rosé. Um, and also you should know that in the south of France, there is an appellation that is only for rosé and it's called Tavelle, um, and they are darker in color like this one. Which leads me to my final point, and that is that, um, can they age? You know, it's a question of like, you know, what do we do with rosé if it's two years old or something? Generally speaking, yeah, they're meant to be drank young and fresh. You don't want them more than a couple years old, but the better made they are, the longer that they can age and retain their freshness. And also there are those rare unicorns that are in fact able to age and sort of meant to age. Um, there's a winemaker 
Uh, it's called Chateau Simone, also in the south of France. And uh, they make some very serious rosé. It is more extracted, meaning it has more tannin. It's deeper in color. Those tannins help to protect the wine. And therefore, those antioxidants from the tannins are what protects the wine from oxidizing and um, aging in an unpleasant way. So generally speaking, no rosés. You don't want to be aging them. Are there exceptions? There definitely are. Um, some of them can age beautifully. But, um, the, you know, you'll probably be aware they have a little bit... Um, uh, bigger of a price tag there. Um, I think that probably covers what I want to say about about rosé. I think for me as a salesperson, whether you're a server on the floor or you're somebody that works in retail, it's really important to manage people's expectations about rosé. Um, to uh, be thinking about uh, like I said, if it's something that's a darker color wine, is it going to be not what people are expecting? Um, again, talking to them about sweetness, meaning the color in the glass has nothing to do with whether there's any residual sugar um, in the wine. Um, so really being able to talk to talk people through and make them feel confident because honestly, if it's not something that just looks like pale salmon in the bottle, people get freaked out and they think it's going to be sweet or it's going to be too fruity or they're not going to like it. So it's really important for you as a salesperson to have a good handle on what is in the bottle and what the person is going to enjoy. Uh, so thanks for watching. I hope this was informative and let me know if you have any questions. Thanks guys.